Hi guys, welcome to Dubs Only Sports. Uh, this is going to be episode 34. We're going to jump right into things. Um, we're kind of in this dead space where, yes, there's sports going on, but we've kind of covered everything. Uh, March Madness is in its Elite Eight stage, or halfway through its Elite Eight stages. And simply, there are just so many upsets and so much, so many bad things going on that we kind of predicted. I mean, we said that a lot of the number one and two seeds were definitely so overrated. And we're right to a point where there are literally no number one seeds anymore. So it is what it is. So now with this time, we did say that we're going to make a comment section video and we might have a bloopers video. But right now, we thought it would be fun if we had a video on debating whether or not sports that are classified as sports are actually sports or not. And we're going to start this debate off with esports. If you're not familiar with esports, esports is essentially like professional video gaming. Uh, you look at games like Rocket League, Valorant, CSGO, League of Legends. They're all esports. You have a group of guys coming together, playing professionally, and they actually win money from it. So the question is, is esports an actual sport? What do you think? No, esports is not a damn sport. Absolutely not. A, it's not a sport at all. Okay. It's, the video game, the actual competitive nature of it, yes, it, it does have a competitive nature because you have to win or lose. And it's like you're trying to win. You're doing everything you can to win. But it takes absolutely no physical ability at all. It takes no physical effort, okay? It takes some hand-eye coordination with the controller and the TV and just some practice with video games. But it takes no athleticism at all. It's it's just a game. It's not a sport in any, in any way, shape, or form, okay? The video games are also stupid because they don't replicate what, how the sports are actually played, okay? Like, you see actual professional athletes that play the sports when they play video games. They say it's totally different. So it doesn't actually replicate how the game is played. And no, it's not a sport because you're just playing a video game. It's not a, it's not a sport. It takes no physical It takes no physical ability at all you see a bunch of bums playing video games so no it's not esports are not a sport in any in any way shape or form okay it's a competition maybe it might be a game yes it's not a sport it's not a sport i'm sorry it's not a sport um so um, just just as some uh like warning for the rest of this episode for me personally there is a true definition of sports i got it up right here sport is defined as an activity involving physical exertion and skill in which an individual or team competes against another or others for entertainment. All right. So I feel like the key factors are it's got to be physical, uh-huh. got to be competitive. Okay. And it's got to be for entertainment. Cause I feel like what people don't realize is that sports is purely an entertainment business. Players get paid based off of how many people are watching those players. Simply put. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So when we're talking about esports, yes. I agree that it is not a sport now, but when you look to the future and you look at all these like virtual reality where people are like wearing the goggles, standing up, running around in the same place, I feel like once we get to that point, we can consider it a sport. But yes, sitting down in front of a computer and, you know, typing keys as a video game player myself, I don't consider myself when I sit down and play video games, I do not consider myself playing a sport in that moment in time. But if we do get to a point where the metaverse is so bonkers that it's, you know, we're basically running around in a virtual world and you can play sports virtually, then fine. I will classify that as a sport. And maybe they come up with their own thing. Maybe you can do first person shooters in virtual reality and have that thing going on. But for me personally, yes, I agree. As of right now, it is not a sport, but based off of developing technologies, I can definitely see it becoming a sport in the near future, just because of it'll be more physical, it'll definitely be more competitive, and the entertainment of it will go skyrocketing because people are just kind of intrigued by all of this. So that's that's me, esports, personally. Not a sport now, but in the future. I didn't think of it like that, but that's actually a good point. I feel like once it becomes like a VR thing and you actually have to physically do something, I feel like it can be considered a sport at that point, depending on how much physical activity the participants actually do. The thing that's a little odd is like... <clears throat> why would you do a VR sport if you're, if you could just play the sport in reality, but that's a whole like complex societal issue that we'll have to deal with in 20 years. But it, that is a good point. I mean, if it, if it becomes like VR and just totally like physically active, yeah, maybe it might be. I, I could definitely see that. Yeah. Well, I'm saying, um, yeah. and then the next one that we're moving on to a lot of middle-aged men in the world right now are going to get very offended by this one. 
Fantasy sports is simply not a sport, okay? Fantasy sports is just picking players to do well throughout the season. That is all you're doing. And the same thing goes for sports gambling. I feel like we can do fantasy sports and sports Absolutely. gambling in the same kind of thing here because you are essentially just picking players to do well, either based off of pure thought or based off of statistics. There is no com- – like, there's competitive in that, but there's no entertainment from you coming off of that. And there's no physical activity that you're doing other than typing with your little thumbs about why you think Luka Doncic is going to score over 50 points against the Bucks because you remembered that he averages 130 points against the Bucks, and he you think that he can at least score. You know, it's just it's just not sport. Neither of them are sports, in my opinion. Yeah, no, no, I totally agree. Like, so people would be like, well, why aren't fantasy sports and gambling sports? Well, because you're not doing anything. You you are not doing anything, okay? You're basically betting on other people and to do well at their sport, okay? You're basically saying, I think that this player is a very good player and that they're going to do well, and I'm picking them to do well. Yeah, it might be, it's gambling for sure, okay? Is Does it have a win-loss com- um, component? Obviously, okay? Gamblers, you know. If you know, you know. But like, yeah, it's Addicts. not a sport because it takes zero physical activity or talent. It takes It takes no physical ability at all, okay? And then it's just, it's basically, you're basically, it's just gambling. I mean, just like picking, it just basically predicting what's going to happen. Okay. It takes, it's not a sport because you're not doing anything yourself. The only thing you're doing is predicting something. It's more intellectual than actually being a sport. It's just a game. I mean, it's like, it's a a game. You could say it's a competition. It's not even a competition. It's just like, it's just betting. It's just, you want to make money. And then for fantasy sports, it's like, yeah, you're, you're betting on sports, but you're not actually participating in a sport because you're just basically picking other players to do well. You're not actually participating in it yourself you you individually are just picking other people to do something for you so no it, it's not it's not a sport in any shape or way but yeah. in a similar kind of thing not not really that similar but chess okay it's a very it's been it's been one of the most popular games in history i mean it probably is the most popular game in history everyone plays it's an chess. olympic sport it's an olympic sport andrew tate supports chess to the death okay and you got all these people saying that is chess a sport? Is chess not a sport? So, in your opinion, is chess a sport? Okay, here's what I think. Right. So, I feel like there needs to be a subcategory of sports that chess falls into. I feel like you have you have the rigorous sports where you've got baseball, football, basketball, soccer whatever right you like these sports right like the Uh core sports right and then i feel like we should have a subcategory of sports called standing sports where standing sports is essentially like maybe you are not doing like as much physical activity as like these other sports but it's still competitive it's still for entertainment and you're exercising more of your mind than you are your actual body. And I feel like that grants just as much credibility as rigorous sports does. So I feel like, and we're gonna go through a lot of these where I'm gonna say that it should be a standing sport because you're not really doing, it's more of a mental game than it is a physical game. And I feel like to counter that just seems a little bit invalid in my opinion. So for chess, I'm going to say, yes, it is a sport, but it's a very, it's a subcategory of sport, but still a sport all the same. Okay, I have two things. The first thing is that totally counters what you said for esports, because what's the difference between chess and esports in terms of them being a sport? They're both a game. Well, because my thing, my big thing about esports is that in the future, I can see it being a rigorous sport. Well, I'm talking about right, right now, now. It's kind I'm of in that right limbo. Now. Right now, it's in that limbo. And for that, I just can't put it. I just can't say it's a sport if it's in between the two. How can you say that esports is not a sport right now and chess is a sport right now when they're like the same type of thing? It's a game that requires mental concentration and some like, like I don't just it 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 requires some like mental um ability, right? But it doesn't require Mm -hmm. as much physical ability. What's it? It's it's just a what's it? How is how are those two different? Because chess is a very intellectual game. You don't have okay. a lot of intellectual people playing video games, for starters. I mean, I feel like in comparison, you look at the top chess players in the world. The top chess players in the world have been playing chess for years. 
Whereas the top esports players in the world are literally teenagers. Yeah, I feel like they've been playing for years. They've still been playing for a long time. Five, six, seven, ten years. I mean, okay, ten years compared to like 30, 40 years is what I'm some, talking about. But some chess players are young. I mean, you, you got some chess players that have been playing for ten years and they're still really good. I mean, it just it doesn't. Yeah, but have... you can you you like counter that to like the best chess players. And yes, there's a little bit of comparison, but the best chess players are always going to win. And I, I feel like a lot of this is like I look at like a lot of like Twitch streamers who do like a lot of like chess.com and that is technically esports, but at the same time they're playing chess. So does, is, does that make does that make chess an esport? Now I'm confusing myself. Yes, does that make chess you, an esport? No. So in in my opinion, chess is not a sport. Does that mean that chess is not hard or difficult or is not one of the most like hard like hard things to do? No, I think that chess is a very difficult thing to do. In my opinion, it's a game. It's a board game. That's that's what chess is, okay? It's not a sport because, yes, I know I've seen all these things where they say that chess players can burn thousands of calories while playing the game because their brain is just move, moving so fast and they're so locked in on the game and they play for hours and hours on end. But I just don't see chess as a sport because, like, y- yes, you're you're facing another person, but you're not physically altering anything. You're just, you're, your brain is doing all the work which it, it does, it, and you are physically exerting yourself from the standpoint that you're burning calories and your your mind is like making your body like, li- like, li- like you're literally like losing weight because like you're burning calories just because the amount of energy you're putting in, you are putting energy into it. But I just don't like feel like it takes any physical like hand-eye coordination or any physical talent. It's all mental talent. It, it's 100% mental talent. It has, it has no physical ability at all. So I just feel like chess is not, it's a very difficult thing to do. And it's like a very, I say it's more of like a, like a game or competition similar to esports. Like they, they might be very difficult. It's not that their difficulty is low. It's just that in my opinion, they do not have enough physical demand for them to be considered a sport. And it's not, again, it's not the, the amount of energy you're putting in or the amount of time you're putting in. It is the amount of physical, like talent and ability and energy that you're putting in. I feel like the combination of the three, I mean, like if you, if you look at like a football or baseball player, even if you look at a baseball player, they don't have to do, they're not, it's not as physically demanding as let's say basketball or like track and field because you're like running all the time or whatever. But like baseball, you're still, it's a, it's a lot of mental game because like you're focusing on the pitches, you're focusing on everything, but then you're still moving around. You still have to have a lot of athleticism to play baseball. So it's like, I just don't see chess and esports as sports because like, yes, you're mentally zoned into the game, but physically you don't need anything. I mean, you, you don't need any physical tools to play chess. I mean, if you broke both of your legs, you could still play chess. But if you broke both of your legs, you couldn't play most other sports. So I just, I, I don't think that chess can be considered a sport. Is it a competition? Is, the, is it a high level game? Is it a one of the most popular games on earth? Yes, but I just don't, I don't think it's a sport. Yeah, I mean, you know, going back to like my standing sport, like subcategory, I guess I would put esports in that as well. But I feel like for me, I'm more of like, I, I know video games, like the back of my hand. So I have like more experience in that. So that's why I can see a future of esports where people are literally getting up and moving around and actually have to be physically fit in order to compete in esports as well. Um, mm-hmm. But for chess, I mean, chess, there is a little bit of a future in chess and there's a version of chess that we may not get into right now, but there is a version of chess that does switch the whole game around. And I consider that a sport without a doubt in my mind. But to uh, move on, and this is definitely one of the more controversial ones, and especially for us as guys off the bat, cheerleading. Now, cheerleading, it has been a debate for a few years now, I feel like. Um, I feel like going through high school, I was definitely seeing a lot of like Netflix documentaries on cheerleading and like why it should be a sport. I saw a lot of YouTube videos on like, you know, cheerleading is a sport. Cheerleading isn't a sport. Yada, 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 yada. I think that cheerleading, when you look at cheerleading, no, it is not a sport. But when you think about competitive cheerleading, okay, now we're talking. I've been to a couple of competitive cheerleading tournaments. Please don't ask me why. But I have been there. And let me say that half the things that these girls do are simply way out of my life. I'm too big for it. You don't have the muscles for it. We wouldn't be able to do it. But when you when you think of cheerleading, right? When you just think of cheerleading, you think about the girls with pom-poms, 
on the sidelines of football games, basketball games, waving them around, having the giant cone, yelling at the fans, you know, doing flips in the air. That is not a sport. But when they do competitive cheerleading and they're doing it against one another, yes, I can classify that as sport. I don't know if I have a problem with that because, again, I look at football. You don't have football and then have competitive football. But that might that just might be a but that just might be a petty argument on my part. But when we're looking at cheerleading, I think it's crucial to notice the difference between cheerleading, like cheerleading games, like football games, basketball games, whatever, and competitive cheerleading when you're actually going up against other cheerleaders. I feel like that is considered a sport, whereas just cheerleading on its own is not a sport. That's that's me personally. Yeah, I, I feel like I, I pretty much agree with what you're saying, because a lot of people are like, is it cheerleading a sport? And I'm like, it's not a sport. Cheerleading is not a sport. Again, does that mean that it, it doesn't require a lot of physical activity? No, cheerleading requires tons of physical activity and talent and ability. And it, it's very hard. I mean, we couldn't do it. I mean, no one like we couldn't do it at all. So it's yeah. not the difficulty of it. It's just that when you look at cheerleading, OK, let's first touch on the first part, which is just cheerleading like at like a normal like a basketball game, a football game, a baseball game or anything like that where you have cheerleaders cheering on the team. No, that's not a sport because yes, they still are doing backflips and all these crazy things, but like you're, che you're cheering on the sports team. Like you're not actually mm -hmm. the sport. And like, the thing is with that, you're not actually competing with anyone when you're doing the cheer, right? You're not competing with anyone. So what you're doing is not impacting the other, the team, the, per per the performance of the other team. People might say, Oh, well, what if there's a basketball game and the cheerleaders are cheering like crazy and they're distracting the guy from making the free throws. No. Not a sport, okay? You're not directly influencing the impact of the game, okay? So it's not a sport because you're not, when like in, in the context that we're talking about, just like at a sports game, cheerleading is not a sport because you're not you're not competing with anyone else. You're just doing, you're, you're doing your cheers to boost your team's ability and you're not directly impacting anything. The competitive cheerleading is a little different. I gotta say, that one's kind of iffy for me because like that is similar to, to almost like gymnastics in a sense because it's like kind of a sport because you're it it demands such a high level of like physical ability and talent and just coordination and everything the only thing i have with that is that when you're judging a cheer routine or when you're judging gymnastics is there any like objective measure of how good something is because i feel like for these kind of things like for for example would you consider like the nba dunk contest a sport and in my opinion i wouldn't it's just a contest it's it's like a it's like a show it's a competition it's a contest it's not like an actual sport right and i feel like it's mm -hmm. kind of similar in this sense is that it's very athletic and it's very physically demanding but like a lot of the me the things that they measure the cheerleaders on are very subjective so you could if some if two cheerleaders did the same exact routine right but one of the, one judge liked the way that the one person did the routine more than the other they could just be like oh this cheerleader won even though they did the exact same routine Okay. Sometimes it's even like a matter of smiling, like the amount of yeah, smiling gets you points like as that. well. And sometimes it's like creepy, like the amount of times that these like girls are like, yeah, it's no, it's actually bad because like the judges are like super like anal about all this stuff, and they're like same thing in gymnastics, yeah. like they have to pose a certain way and they have to land a certain way and they have to smile a certain way, and it just it's almost like I I don't know if because like this in my opinion we talked about the definition of a sport of a sport earlier, but I feel like another component of it is that there is an objective measure of how well you perform. Like in basketball, mm -hmm. whoever wins the game has more points than the other team. It's an objective measure of who won the game. Baseball, same thing. Football, same thing. I mean, there's an objective measure of, of if you won or if you lost, right? And I feel like in cheerleading and in, in gymnastics and all these competitions, I just don't see the same level because it's like, yes, you might be better than someone else but how do you really show that like how can you really prove that you're better than the other person because it's very subjective one judge might think you're better one judge might think, think the other person's better and we're, we're going to get into this other stuff later but it's like the same thing in like like wrestling and boxing is like unless you knock the guy out it's very subjective who won the fight because some mm -hmm. people might land more punches but some of the punches might be harder punches it's just it's there's no objective measure of how well you yeah. perform so I feel like that's mm -hmm. that's why for me it's hard to consider cheerleading a sport because there's not an objective measure of how well you're performing. It's very physically demanding. It's probably one of the most difficult competitions or athletic things to do. It, one of the most difficult athletic feats to to do. But I just don't know if you can consider it a sport because there's not an objective measure of how well you performed relative to your other opponent. It's a lot of subjective subjectiveness between the judges and yeah. I just I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's a pretty good point. It's it's very much it's very much a gray space. Um 
because like you know you have a lot of people who like are demanding it to be like a sport but then there are just like so many aspects of it another problem that i have with cheerleading and a lot of other like indoor sports is the fact that i have played baseball games and i have played soccer games i played football games where it's actively 100 120 degrees outside none of these cheerleaders none of these basketball players no one who plays in indoor volleyball players whatever no one will have to, unless you're playing beach volleyball but no one will have to ever endure that kind of thing because people will be like oh well baseball you get breaks whereas cheerleading you don't get breaks you have to do the whole routine and then you get judged on the routine and so i guess i understand that but you don't get a break from the heat for starters no you're and playing three or four hours what's where you play heat, bro yeah and then you know for football you could be playing in snow for uh for soccer you could be playing in rain it it, yeah. it it you know there are just so many factors to it and for us like we're just doing such a basic like is it a sport yes or no like yeah. it is no deeper than that so but no. for cheerleading I think it's a sport as long as you're talking about competitive cheer. And that's like barely crossing the line for me. But yeah. for like cheerleading in general, no, I do not think it's a sport. Yeah. Okay, so now let's move on. Mookie Betts' second best sport. He's he's his a great baseball player. He's I mean Loki Loki, but like he's in a great he's a great baseball player, but Mookie Betts is an absolutely amazing bowler. Bowling is a very popular activity. A lot of people do it. A lot of kids do it. It's very cool if you want to go with your friends. But do you think that bowling is a sport? I mean, again, let's go back to my my little criteria list here, right, for sports, right? It's got to be physical. It's got to be competitive. And it's got to be entertaining. And as unfortunate as I hate to – like, as much as I don't want to say it, bowling hits all of those. So – Bowling, yes, is a sport in comparison to sports like football, like basketball, like baseball. Obviously, you compare it to those and you're like, okay, like there's obviously a big difference in like the physical exertion that we are dealing with. But you just look at the three criteria of it being physical, it being competitive, and it being for entertainment's sake. I mean, it ticks all the boxes. So to say that it isn't a sport, I feel like, you know, just doesn't really seem fair to a lot of competitive bowlers out there because I know there are a lot of you and the amount of times that I've fallen asleep watching ESPN and I wake up to the PBA being on, it's a, you know, it's a lot of time. Either that or the World Series of Poker. I mean, you know. Facts. Facts. Yeah. No, so I, know I think saying. bowling is a sport. Like as much as I hate to say it, bowling is a yeah. sport, to be fair. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think that bowling, it might not be the most physically demanding sport again, but it's a sport because th these are the criteria, right? It's physical. It takes hand-eye coordination to roll the ball and to knock down all the pins. It does take a, a lot of talent and hand-eye coordination to do that, okay? It does take physical ability. You have to have the right strength, the right touch. It does take physical ability. It is for entertainment. You see the PBA. You see one of the biggest memes on on whatever on all these social media platforms are some of these bowlers after they hit it like hit a strike. It's absolutely Pete hilarious. Weber. Pete Weber is Dude, probably Pete the greatest bro, man on planet Earth. Who do you think you are? I am. Dude, absolutely legendary. But so yeah, I mean, bowling is also it's very objective. If you knock down the pins, you get a certain amount of points. If you don't knock down the pins, you don't get the points. It's very simple. It's scored a specific way in, a, in an objective way. Okay. You win or you lose. If you get more points than the other, it's if you get more points than your competition. Okay. It's not, it, it's not rocket science. Bowling is a sport. Is it the most physically demanding sport? Absolutely not. Is it the most competitive sport? No. Is it a sport? Absolutely. Because it, it hits all the criteria and yeah, I mean, there's nothing else much. There's not much else to say about it. It's a sport. I mean, it might not be the most flashy sport or the most entertaining sport, but it's a sport. It's a sport. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean... now moving on. Dude, I remember playing this all the time when I was like 12, 13. I absolutely love it. Ping pong. It, ping pong is the shit, bro. It's absolutely, it's like one of the most fun things to do. It's it's amazing. But there is professional ping pong, which is crazy. I mean, these guys hit the ball like so hard, just spinning it like crazy. Their serves are insane, but I think they have it in the Olympics too, if I'm not mistaken. I think there's professional yeah. ping pong in the Olympics. But do yeah. you think that ping pong is a sport? I mean, I, okay. There are so many, like, subsets of tennis that it is just ridiculous. Like, for me personally, you look at sports like badminton, 
Even Facts. like racquetball to a certain extent. Pick, like pickleball now? Pickleball. You know, it's just like, bro, like pickleball is literally an excuse for like 70 and 80 year old people to like just stay physically active because, you know, phys- like pickleball, again, is one of the most least demanding physical sports of all time. And I've played pickleball. And let me just say, it is some of, it's so simple that it just like, should it be a sport? But that said, like, yes, again, look at the criteria. It's physical, it's competitive, and it's for entertainment's sake. But the thing that I have with ping pong and for things like badminton, pickleball, even racquetball, it's just like smaller versions of tennis, right? And it's so ironic that I can look at something like tennis and go, yeah, that is a very physical sport. I could never be a tennis player. I would never want to be a tennis player, first starting. But then to go from that and just go from that to like a miniature version of tennis and for that to be such a drastic change, I feel like that speaks volumes. So while I do think that things like badminton uh, or while I do think that ping pong is a sport, I just feel like, at least some of these versions of tennis, they just got to go. Like, you either play tennis or you don't play tennis. You know, like, deal with it. it, it. No, I get what you're you saying, because there's literally, like, there's, like, eight sports that are, like, related to tennis in some way. And they're, like, no they're sense. Just, it, it, it makes no sense. I mean, yeah, I, I agree. But I feel like ping pong, ping pong has to be a sport. I mean, it's yeah. very hard. Like, competitive professional ping pong is very hard. They hit the ball so fast. I mean, the spin that they have on the ball, the hand-eye coordination for ping pong is probably probably one of the hardest sports to have hand, hand-eye coordination for because they're hitting the ball crazy hard and you have to react in such a short amount of time because they're like literally five, 10 feet away from you. So yeah, I mean, yeah. ping pong, it, it, it's physically demanding. You need to be agile so you can move around and hit the and hit the ball back. You need some good hand-eye coordination to return these crazy fast, um, crazy fast hits. But and then it is entertaining. I mean, if you watch some ping pong, I mean, it might not be the most entertaining sport, but it is kind of funny. I mean, these guys are like yeah. locked in. So it is entertaining. It is physically demanding and it is competitive. I mean, and it is also, it's objective. If you you win, if you, if you, there's rules, if you win, you win. If you lose, you lose. It's very objective. There's not a lot of controversy there. So I think that ping pong, it might not be, again, it's like a, it's a smaller sport. It's an Olympic sport. It's not one of the biggest professional sports in the world, but it's definitely 100% a sport. But now moving on, is pool or billiards, whatever you want to call it, is pool a sport? I know that like it might be a little bit like controversial because people are like, oh, people just do it for fun and it's not really professional. But like, do you think that pool is a sport? Again, like I'm going to put this in the same like subcategory that I put chess and esports because it is widely considered a sport. For me to sit here and say that it isn't a sport just seems a bit illogical. But, you know, like the physical aspect of it definitely is lacking. And to be fair, again, just like chess, it is more of a mental game than it is a a physical game. I mean, to be fair, you just look at it on the surface. You're hitting a ball with a stick. I mean, that's really it. Like you're hitting a ball with a stick and trying to make it go in a hole. You know, like. It, 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 it's nothing like crazy. So I'm putting it in my subcategory of a standing sport. So I don't fully believe that, you know, like in comparison to a lot of these competitive and physical demanding sports, it definitely, it ha- it doesn't like correlate to them whatsoever, but it's physical kind of, it's competitive and it's for entertainment's sake. So again, it'll be a standing sport for me. Not a full, not a rigorous sport, but just like, you know, more of a mental game than the physical one. I'm going to say that pool is a sport. I'm not even going to lie. I'm going to say that pool is a sport. It is, it is kind of difficult. I mean, it does take some hand-eye coordination to hit the balls a certain way. The angle, I mean, it is very mental in the sense that you have to like think about all the angles, which way you want to approach it, um, which ball you want to hit. That's fine. But the hand-eye yeah. coordination to actually execute what you're thinking is a lot harder i mean mm-hmm. if you play it on your phone it's super easy right but if you actually played it in it's real life it, it, esports true esports but if you play it in reality i feel like it's a little bit harder because like you actually you actually do need a high level of hand-eye coordination and just practice to do it. you need to like re- repeatedly practice i mean you see all these guys on like instagram and tiktok they're doing all these crazy hits that are like curving and doing all this crazy stuff that takes practice so i feel like pool 
you could definitely it definitely can be considered a sport because it's entertaining when these guys are doing these crazy hits trick shots mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff and it, it does take a lot of talent and like practice to develop that talent and it is competitive and it, and it is objective you there's a specific set of rules if you fulfill those and you win the game you win the game i mean something there's no controversy again no controversy not subjective at all it's very objective so i feel like i feel like pools of sport but this is now we got to move on to the last one that we're going to do today i feel like okay so this has been going crazy now for a while i mean just out of nowhere all these celebrities are like supporting it you even see like logan paul was doing stuff with it like just it, it's going crazy now face slapping i mean what who created this okay i need to know who created this this is absolutely insane but i mean i i just is face slapping is face slapping a sport here's here's my argument on face slapping okay I look at boxing and I classify boxing as sport, right? Uh-huh. You, they, you know, they have to, they have to be in the gym, be in there for hours, work out their muscles, you know, literally like, even like sometimes they have to like train their body just to like get hit because odds are yeah. you're going to get blown out sometimes. Right. And for that, I look at boxing and then I look at slap a face slapping and I'm like, like, who is it for me? like to say that face slapping isn't a sport when I can say that boxing is a sport when I'm obviously not going to say that it's the same thing because it's not, that would be very disrespectful to a lot of boxers out there because boxing is simply just like putting your body on the line for just, just for, you know, just for the glory of winning. Right. And that is something that I have so much respect for. Now face slapping does not match that whatsoever. Like it just seems like, again, like, my argument with tennis and having all of these like subsets of tennis that a lot of them need to go face slapping, I feel like follows that same category. And while yes, like it, it's like, it is physical because like you're enduring pain. Don't get me wrong. It's competitive. And you know, like for your point about like, like having like an object, an objective point system, like, I'm not sure if there, like, is a point system. I think it's literally just slapping each other until one is, like, all right, done. Yeah, like, one of them just like, gets knocked out. Basically, yeah. the same way that boxing is. So, like, for me, like, yes, face slapping is a sport, but I don't think it should be, you know? Yeah, like, no, I, I it's feel just, you, it's just It just seems so, like, like, pointless to me. Like, you just yeah. stand there. And need each yeah. other cross face. And if, if if you've got like a David versus Goliath situation, I mean, like Goliath wins in that scenario every single time. And I feel like with sports, yeah. another big thing is like the whole underdog story. You can never have an underdog story in face slapping. If you have a little like five foot four guy going up a guy who's six eight and weighs three hundred and fifty pounds. Never in a million years, because you also have to think about like hand size correlates with that too. And hand size is genetic, you know, like you, you can't do anything about that. Like if yeah. you're fit, if your hand only, you know, covers like an eighth of his face, odds are it's not going to hurt as much as if his whole hand covers your entire goddamn head. So like, yes, there's a physical aspect of it. Yes, it's competitive. Yes, it's for entertainment's sake. And yes, there's an objectifying way of scoring face slapping that does make it a sport but i just think it is so dumb and so stupid that it just should not be a sport but it's already taken off so that probably won't happen so you know that's me personally i just think it's dumb i think it's a stupid sport that's what i think you know what i'm gonna say you gonna say fuck no face slapping is absolutely not a sport it's a human rights abuse that's what that's what face slapping is it's a human rights abuse it needs to be bad. Okay, this is ridiculous. I mean, honestly, <sighs> this is what the oh sport is. Days. You're basically allowing a person to assault another person for free and as entertainment. That's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. In boxing and in MMA and in wrestling, the opponent actually has a chance to defend to defend themselves, right? They actually That's have a so chance funny. to defend themselves. This is literally just yeah. a human rights abuse. I mean, I'm not even going to lie. Face slapping is literally just a human rights abuse. I mean... I, I don't understand how who allowed this to happen. I don't know why people get so much entertainment from this. It's kind of sick. It shows how sick society is that people are actually enjoying watching people literally get concussed and like pass out 
by just getting slapped in the face. I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, who create? I want to know which sicko created face slapping. I mean, first of all, I totally agree. It's the stupidest thing ever. It's not entertaining at all. It's so dumb. I mean, if you if you're a person that wants to sit there for three hours and watch people slap each other in the face, I think you should get your get something to do in your life because you I obviously just, have problems. Obviously I just think problems. people are like like. As much as people don't want to admit it, we're all like naturally so violent that anyone can look at face slapping or a majority of the population can look at face slapping and like get pleasure out of that and get joy out of it just for the sheer violence of it. Like to be fair, that's what I think. I think that's what the attraction is. This is the violence that people are just naturally born with. I mean, maybe, but I feel like it's also just a thing that people just like drama and people want like they like this sport is just taking off and it just it's like a, it's a whole thing it's a whole like same thing with like pickleball just took off and all these like spike ball just takes off you know i feel like it's that kind of thing where it's like it's kind of popular now i don't think it's gonna be popular in five years i mean it's ridiculous i mean who, which which idiot created face slapping i mean you literally people are trying to people are trying to justify it and say oh it takes talent you have to hit them a certain way you have to strengthen your jaw you have to learn how to take the hit what the fuck you mean bro you're just slapping someone in the face, dude. What the, what, like, it doesn't take talent. It just, if you're an eight foot, 300 foot behemoth, okay, you're going to absolutely destroy this little midget twerp that's sitting next to you. Of course. <laughs> how is, how is this a sport? This is literally, as I said, a human rights abuse, okay? These people need to be in jail, in jail. Oh, okay? If this, if this oh. happened on the street, you'd be in jail. So I don't understand how this is a sport because like, oh, like, oh, we're doing face slapping now. Like, like, can I just go up to someone and be like, oh, face slap? Oh, I got, like, no. Human rights <laughs> abuse, go to jail. It's not a sport. It's dangerous. It's, there's no benefit to this. It takes, it's like not skill. Don't even, I don't even want to hear it. Again, as I said, if you're eight foot, 399 pounds versus some little seven, seven, one twerp, Seven, seven one. one. <laughs> I take this back. I take this back. I'm getting a little too excited, but no. I I mean, if you have like an like a seven foot five, Zach Eady, five hundred pounds, just slapping a five foot six little midget, who's gonna win? <laughs> who's gonna win? I mean, duh. So like, no, face slapping is not a oh, sport. Jesus. It needs to be banned. I don't need, I don't want to hear the competitive everything gets thrown out the window. The competitiveness, we don't even have to look at the definitions for it just all gets thrown out the window. It's a human rights abuse. So before it can be classified as a sport, it's a human rights abuse. So we'll look at it first as <laughs> face slapping the human rights abuse, and then then we can look at it as face slapping the quote unquote sport. No, no, absolutely not. Face slapping is not a sport. But this is gonna do it for our first episode of Is This a Sport? This is kind of funny. We're going to keep doing this. There's some wild sports coming up. I'm not even going to lie. Wild sports that you guys probably have never heard of, but we're going to tell you about them because people genuinely think these things are sports and we'll see. Maybe they are sports. Maybe they aren't, but we're going to keep you up to date with this. It's going to be absolutely hilarious, but we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys. Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Spotify, YouTube, at Dubs Only Sports. Make sure you're following all that. Feel free to comment. Again, we're going to have this comment section video coming out real soon. We're only going to do the best of the best, the funniest of the funnies, the, uh, you know, the hate crimiest of the hate crimes. So, you know, look out for that video. And if you want to be featured in that, just drop us a comment. Maybe don't go, don't go too crazy because there are guidelines through literally every social media app. And um, not everything flies, but, you know, some things are funny and some things are just borderline, like, suspicious. So. Feel free to do that, and we will catch you guys in the next episode. Peace out, guys. Peace out, guys.